Hey, good morning, everybody. Peter Kaimi here. It is Friday. It is 8.30. It is the end of May. Really? Already? Um, really, really hard to believe that it's the end of May already. Wow. Um, as I said that, it just kind of hit me. That's why I paused for a second. It just kind of dawned on me. We're into June, effectively, uh, at this point. Um, I don't know what happened to 2020, but it's coming and going really, really quickly. Uh, it's been an interesting year, no doubt about it. Uh, tragic for some. Um, and, uh, you know, listen, some people have, have dealt with what's been going on better than others. And some people have had themselves in a better position. And some people just have better luck. But 2020 has been an interesting year. But let's start with this. To my friend Jerry, Jerry, today I raise my cup to you and to all of you. I raise my comma cup and I welcome you to the comma uh, coffee talk with comma here at the uh, at the home office again. Uh, I do believe that we're going to be transitioning back into our main office space here very very soon. I'm super excited about that. Um, but today, uh, one more time, we're coming to you live here from the uh, from the house. So uh, lots to talk about today. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is. Thankfully, we had enough wood here because I had to build an arc. Based on the rain we got last week and the rain we've gotten this week and we're going to get today and we're going to get tomorrow, in order to get anywhere, you have to have an arc. You, you, your boat may not even survive this. Um, the, uh, you know, we were supposed to have a, a yard installed uh, a couple of weeks ago, which would have been great to have had it installed prior to all this rain, but he's so backed up because of all of this rain that we're backed up now. But, uh, but yeah, I, I think at this point in time, if we could build an arc, we would, because it's the only way to get around right now. Anyhow, so the rain has been, has, has been quite something. So here's what our week has looked like, and, and uh, it's been interesting. So Jennifer and Cole, Jennifer drove to Pennsylvania to go see her mom, and Cole decided to jump in the car last minute to go with her. Now, if you know my son Cole, you'll know why he decided to go, because he heard me say one thing that morning, and that is, Man, we've got a long list of things we got to get done around the house. And Cole knows that that means there's going to be some work and not just sitting around playing Xbox all week long or shooting hoops. And so, uh, so Cole thought, you know what? And this is a, you know, I've always said he's very strategic. He, uh, he, he has such great strategy. He knows how to get out of work. I can tell you that. He was able to jump in the car, bring his Xbox with him, do his schoolwork, and play a lot of Xbox in Pennsylvania. And God bless the boy needed a, a week's break from me for sure. So uh, to Cole Kama, if you're watching this morning, I love you, bud. We've kept a whole list of chores just for you. Um, so anyway, so Jen's up there visiting her mom in Pennsylvania. They'll be back this weekend. Um, the best benefit of when Jen goes out of town, which is not a benefit in of any stretch um, because I miss her, but more importantly um, is the one-on-one -on -one time I get with Camden, right? So this week has been awesome. I mean, Camden and I – um, like hand in glove, we get along so well, and, and he's such a little worker and a little pleaser that he, he and I just it's just been so fun. We've taken on some house projects, we've taken on some landscaping stuff, just just small stuff, some painting here and there, just just little things. But to have him at my side the whole time is great. And I'll tell you a quick story. So I think it was uh, I don't even know what day it was earlier this week, maybe Tuesday. I don't remember. We took a whole day. A whole afternoon and evening, and we, we spread 40 bales of pine. Um, we then spread almost four full cubic yards of pine bark nuggets, and he helped with every bit of that. That was a full afternoon of work, and he didn't want to take a break. He didn't, want, he didn't ask for downtime. He was just fantastic. Here's the best part, right? So he didn't ask, what's in it for me? You know, can I get a, a new Matchbox car or a new video game? He didn't ask any of those things. Let me tell you what he did ask. Uh, what, he, what he did say, he said, thank you, because at the end of the night, it was about 9.15 when we finished, I threw him in the car, we were a sweaty mess, and we drove over to Harris Teeter, the grocery store, and I went and picked up some ice cream and a, and a bottle of root beer, and I made him an American classic. We just had a root beer float that night at about 10.15, because you know every good kid needs to have root beer floats at 10.15 at night. Um, but he earned it. He earned every bit of it. He loved it, and it's just, it's just been a really, really fun um, week just to spend with him. But he did all that work with no expectation of anything. All he got at the end of it was a root beer float. And he's happy. He's just so happy. So we, we've had a great week. Last night, um, you know, one of the things we got to do, we got to enjoy a couple of good steaks last night. And truth be told, we bought two more. We have two more steaks. So we're, uh, we're eating like kings this week when it comes to the, the, what we're having for dinner. Um, but he, uh, he and I have just uh, – we've had just so much fun um, just spending one-on-one -on -one time together. 
we were out there. If, if you watch my Facebook page, you'll probably notice that at one point, Camden um, stopped. I got a picture of him standing. He was all dirty. He was a mess. He just cleaned out the, the, the chimney for the fireplace, the, the, the kickback in there. And as he said, I took this picture of him, and I've stared at that picture. If you go back and scroll back here on my page, you'll see, man, that kid is no longer 12. I know he's 12 by number of years, but I see a young teenager in there now. And I, I, I remember the same thing happened with a picture of Cole right here in my four-year uh, a few years ago. Um, he is no longer that little kid. And uh, he, he, you start, I'm starting to see some, some of those older features starting to happen. And while I'm excited for him to grow up, he's going to be a great young man. I'm really proud of him. Um, you know, there's a piece of me that has caused me this week to go back and look at some old pictures of Camden and uh, one you might see get posted later today. Uh, but he he is uh, he's gotten to that point now, and I know every one of you that have had kids or has kids, you guys have seen it. It happens, right? They get to that point where it, it's exciting, but it's also I mean, I can my, my eyes are a little a little misty. Um, you know, it makes me think of this. It makes me think of this. I, I just had this conversation with a, with a friend the other day in the yard. Um, there's gonna come. There's a meme out there that says there's gonna come a day where I won't have anybody to take the practice anymore. And those days are coming a lot quicker than I, than I think I, I want them to right now. Uh, Cam's going to be 13 in two months, not even two months. And, uh, you know, three years later, I'll have his own car and take himself to practice. So I'm, I'm down to it now at this point in time, and I'm relishing every bit of that. And I encourage you to do the same. So more, a little bit more about this. So one last thing I want to tell you. If you need landscape supplies and you need a great price and you want great customer service and you want the delivered uh, in a timely manner, yeah, call Shane Fowler. Shane Fowler is a, is a new friend of mine. Uh, he owns a, a couple companies, Stone Image Works, where they do hardscaping, but he also owns uh, Cedar Creek Landscape Supply. I contacted him uh, this weekend, and on Monday, or, yeah, Tuesday, Tuesday, right after Memorial Day, that morning, I woke up, and it, it was being delivered as, I, as we got the day started. Uh, short notice, um, lots of mulch, lots of pine. Uh, and the prices were phenomenal, best around. So uh, call Shane Fowler if you need his name and number uh, up there at Cedar Creek Landscape Supply. Contact me. I'm happy to put you in touch with him. Uh, big shout out to you this morning, Shane. Hope business is good for you. Um, we've been talking about what to binge watch, right? I've been asking you guys, what, what should you be binge watching? What should we be binge watching? And, uh, you know, a lot of things we watch have to be kid-friendly, that kind of thing. And I told you that Camden and I have gone back and started watching, like, old seasons of Survivor. And we've really enjoyed that. And uh, one of our favorite players of all time, this older man named Bob, just won a season, I mean, season, I don't know, 13 or something like that. And uh, But he's from Maine, and he's just really, really crafty. And, and so, uh, you know, big shout-out to the guys that we like when they win. Uh, the other thing we've been watching lately, and this one cracks me up, I, I know nothing. If you know me at all, you know I know nothing about pop culture. I know nothing about actors, actresses. I know nothing about any of that nor do I care, quite frankly. I can watch a movie and two months later watch it again like I've watched it for the first time because I just kind of lose myself in the movie for two hours and then I come back again. I've watched so many movies multiple times that by the time I get to the end, I'm like, wait a minute, I think I've seen this before. Drive, Jen, baddie, absolutely baddie. But it, but again, I just, the actors and actresses, part of it doesn't just doesn't matter to me. But again, so Cam and I have spent a lot of time together uh, this week and he walks in the other day and I'm watching a show called Suits. I know nothing about it. And he goes, oh, that's got the royal lady in it. And I was like, what's he talking about, the royal lady? So he comes back in and he goes, Dad, you realize that you and I were watching Suits together uh, about a year ago? I was like, we were? He's like, yeah, you don't remember that breaks my heart. You don't remember watching Suits with me. And I have no recollection of watching the show ever. I'm watching it again in my mind for the first time. And, uh, and then Jennifer walks in about two hours later. She's like, oh, we watched Suits together last year with Camden. I was like, we did? I had no idea. And then it dawned on me about, I don't know, three or four episodes later, I was like, wait a minute, isn't that, that that lady who married into the royal family, which, by the way, no royal family here, but I just, I don't, I don't buy into it. Um, but isn't that the lady, isn't that the lady that's just married into the royal family, Meghan Markle or something? And Camden goes, Dad, I told you, that's the royal lady. So we've had just the biggest time and just laughed so hard about that kind of thing. Um, I will tell you something that we're watching together we're really enjoying is the whole Michael Jordan thing, the whole last dance. Uh, we're two episodes in, and, uh, man, I'll tell you what, that is really well done. And, and Camden and I have really enjoyed that, uh, and we're saving it so when Cole gets back, he can watch. But if, if you've watched The Last Dance, tell me, is that something that you enjoyed? Was it good? Is it worth watching all the way through to the end? Susan, I'm with you. I hear you. They, they grow up so quickly, Susan. 
Um, I want to tell you a quick story I told a friend of mine yesterday. What's in a name, right? So there's certain names that belong, you know, Tom Cruise is an actor's name, right? I mean, if you've never heard the name Tom Cruise before, that just sounds like an actor. Um, there's certain names that just sound like certain things, right? Shooter McGavin, for those of you that know who Shooter McGavin is. But there's certain names that remind you of certain things. Well, I was coaching, oh, my, this is going back a good ways because Cole was little. He was so little, he was still playing in a, in a basketball league where the girls and the boys played together. And I was coaching in this league, and I got my roster, and Cole knew some of the kids were excited. And he said, well, who's that person? And there's a kid named Taylor Pickens, and I just knew. I was uh, Taylor Pickens, for those of you from South Carolina, does that not just sound like the starting quarterback to you? Taylor Pickens, or the starting short. I asked a friend of mine yesterday, named Taylor Pickens, what position, what sport? He's like, oh, shortstop, baseball, right? There's certain names that just sound like they belong um, in certain positions, right? Excuse me. It is coffee talk after all, right? So I'm sitting there with my roster, my clipboard, and people are showing up the first day of practice, and I'm so excited about this big, strapping seven-year-old Taylor Pickens that's going to walk in and lead us to championships. And uh, so I'm sitting there, and, and uh, got my head in the clipboard, and a, a big, burly guy walks up to me with a beard. He says, uh, says hey, you're you know, deep voice, deep, much deeper than I can even replicate. And he says, uh, hey, are you coach so-and-so with the, you know, the whatever, the, the Titans? I was like, yes, sir. He said, uh, he said, I'm Taylor Pickens' dad. I was like, oh, great. And I turn around to look, and I see Taylor Pickens' little sister standing there. And I turn around to look, and I'm like, well, wh where's Taylor? He said, this is my daughter, Taylor, right here. She couldn't have been the cutest little button of a girl you've ever seen could barely lift the basketball. But every player on my team was happier that she was on the team than the Taylor Pickens I thought we were getting. Anyhow, I, I share that story with you because it came up this week, and we just, hey, what's up, Chrissy? <clears throat> we just got the biggest kick out of that. And it came back up again. So tell me, what is the sports name or the actor's name? What's the name that fits perfectly for the role that they have in life? Um, and I, I just thought that was fantastic. We laugh like crazy. So it's summer vacation time, and all of you are scrambling trying to get your summer vacations booked. Here's how I know, because we were doing the same thing. <clears throat> and I ran into a lot of roadblocks. So we love to go to the lakes. We love to go to the lakes of North Carolina. We love to go as high up in the mountains as we can. Lake Glenville is always our favorite spot, less camps, right? So people like, like uh, other lakes that just have a lot more camps on them uh, and a lot more to do, quite frankly. Um, we like the more remote lakes. And uh, so we like to go to Lake Glenville. We're going to go to Lake Santilla this year. And Lake Santilla is right up by the Fontana Dam. It's, it's deep in the mountains of North Carolina. And uh, we found a great place at an incredibly good rate. Uh, we rented a boat for a week. We were so excited. We're going to go up in a couple of weeks, right? Um, 15 minutes from Fontana Dam. And for those of you uh, that are fans of the movie The Fugitive, which was filmed in Cullowee while I was up there at Western Carolina University, the scene where they jump off the dam, that is Fontana Dam. So anyhow, I digress. The, uh, so we get all this book. We book the boat. Everything is lined up perfectly. And Jennifer removes some appointments. I put it on our calendar. We let people know. And I get an email saying, oh, I'm sorry, Peter, uh, that week is no longer available. Uh, I meant to update the calendar and didn't. So we canceled that week. Um, frustrated for sure because we'd moved appointments or what have you. Uh, so three days later, I recognized that the week before that was still open. Same house, same situation. Move the boat, do all those kind of things again. Uh, and went ahead and booked for that week. Get an email back from her again. Oh, my goodness, I can't believe I did it twice. So... Our summer vacation that was supposed to happen this coming month is not going to happen now. And what's funny about it is originally it was going to be a vacation that was wrapped around travel baseball with Camden. We're going to go to Asheville, play in the tournament, and then stay in the mountains for the week. Well, uh, because it got canceled because of coronavirus and because of the two uh, things we just had happen, Jennifer and I got to talking about it, and she, she made a good point. She said, maybe we're not supposed to be up there in June. So we're going to postpone our vacation, maybe go up in September. Uh, maybe school will be back in session. Maybe it'll be just a, a different environment. I don't know. But we're going to have a staycation, um, which has caused us to do some of this, this uh, housework that we've been doing. But then it got me to thinking, what if, and Jennifer, if she's watching today, this is the first time she's heard this, what if we rented an RV? And, yes, you can't say the letters or the word RV without saying it like it's Christmas vacation, right? This here is an RV. I'm seriously considering looking into that. If you have rented an RV in the past, and your family's enjoyed that, will you let me know? But more importantly, if you've rented an RV in the past and your family hasn't enjoyed that, 
Would you please let me know that as well? Um, anyway, so we're just thinking about just cruising around uh, the mountains of North Carolina just for a few days. Um, but more than likely, we'll go back up, get a lake house on a boat, uh, and do that in September. It's, it's just, it's kind of our gig. It's what we love to do. And uh, so pray for us. But again, let me know about the RV. Um, would love to know. Just renting one. If you, I don't know if you own one. I want to know if you've rented one. But here's what I heard this morning, just one last thing, is that there's so many campgrounds of the the playgrounds are closed the ponds are closed the bathrooms are closed so i don't know if it makes sense or not but it did cross my mind let, let me know if, if you uh if that's something you've done before um last thing before we talk uh, about uh last two things before we talk a little bit about uh real estate uh number one video games so my son camden uh, doesn't play video games very often he plays a little bit he's played a lot the last two nights because he just got a new game called nba 2k right it's the basketball game and he is just gaga over it what I can't get over after looking at watching him play is the graphics. I mean, it almost looks like there's a human on the screen, right? And it's, it's unbelievable how good the graphics are. And I was telling him and Cole the stories about when we were kids. I can remember going to the lobby at my high school, Mahar High School, getting ready to go to an away basketball game and getting there and all of us gathering together. And we had just gotten a brand new video game that came out on Nintendo called Mike Tyson Boxing. For those of you that are my age, you know and you remember Mike Tyson Boxing. Less, oh, Pigeon Forge, dude, I love Pigeon Forge. Oh, for Cal Ripken, that place is beautiful, by the way. Um, yeah, Susan, I hear you. Um, and yeah, so Mike Tyson boxing. I can remember the conversation as though it was yesterday. Us looking at each other saying, the graphics will never be better than they are. This is like 1988. The graphics will never be better than they are Mike Tyson boxing. You can't make it any more realistic. And Boy, were we wrong. We were wrong just a couple years later, of course. But it's funny how far games have come. Now it's hard to tell the difference. Um, yeah, Chrissy, I'm with you, and I, and I agree with you. I agree with you, Chris. Um, anyhow, so the, I, I need your help. So most of you know we've got Kaima Cups, which, by the way, if you need one, let me know. We're, we're, we mailed two out this week. If you need a Kaima Cup, let us know. We're happy to put them out there. We have Kaima Caps, right? We have Kaima Coasters. We have Kaima Chapstick. We have Kaima koozies. We have Kaima helmets. We have Kaima lots of things. We, we like Kaima with a hard C or hard K, like a, like coal Kaima, right? Kaima koozies, Kaima cups. Um, so we're thinking, what is the next piece of swag we need to bring? Kaima cutters, like pizza cutters, um, you know, uh, Kaima cutting boards, Kaima coffee, Kaima cocoa, or some of the things. And then uh, it dawned on me, what if we offered Kaima cuddles? right? Cuddles with Kaima or something like that. I don't know. It's a, it's a work in progress right now. But if there's a piece of swag that you've had from any kind of, you know, insurance, people, whatever it is, if there's a piece of swag that, that you just have used over and over again, like our Kaima cups for so many of you that, that you've enjoyed, would you share that with me? Because we're, we're looking to, uh, to kind of spruce things up as we come out of, uh, you know, this uh, whole Kaima coronavirus. Uh, but if there's something in particular, let, let me know. We, we'd really appreciate that. Um, and then finally, uh, let's talk a little bit about real estate. This is going to be really interesting to many of you. Um, I'm going to talk about real estate as a whole for just a second, right? In our, in our market specifically last year on this day, we had 7,909 homes active for you to choose from 7,909. Today, we only have 6,207 guys. That's down 21%. One out of every five people that listed, uh, on average aren't listing this year. Here's the question I have for you. I, and I understand part of the answer. It, it has to do with safety and coronavirus. I'm completely, completely comfortable with that and, and understand it. But if you're thinking about selling, there's safe ways to do it, right? We, we've, we've all gotten really good at um, uh, protecting sellers. That they're, It's a little more work and a little more intentional uh, in terms of what we do to protect them. Um, but if you're thinking about selling, think about this for a second. Actively under contract right now, compared to last year. Last year on this day, last year was a banner year in real estate. First of all, let me just say that. We had 7,896 homes under contract on this day last year, right? Now we're down 21% in terms of number of listings. We've been in this now for eight, almost nine weeks. So the numbers are now the numbers, right? They're no longer lagging numbers from March and uh, you know uh, February. These are our current numbers. Currently under contract, guys, we're even. We have 8,022. We actually have more under contract right now than we did last year at this time. Buyers are buying. And there's less buyers right now than there would be if there wasn't coronavirus. The fact of the matter is buyers are buying. If you are thinking at all about getting your house on the market, guys, we have 1.7 months of inventory right now. 
1.71. If you're thinking about it, give us a call or give your local broker a call. Lots of really good brokers in our community. We're very fortunate for that. If you don't have one, certainly we'd love to be that broker. Um, but give your broker a call. Talk about what the market looks like and how it fits in. It used to tell you that it was only affordable homes that were selling like hotcakes, right? That's no longer the case because of the lack of inventory. We're seeing that number creep up a little bit all the way up into the 400s now where, where houses are selling a little quicker. I wouldn't say like hotcakes, but certainly quicker than the normal because there's just nothing to choose from. For you buyers out there, you don't have time to go home and sleep on it for a day or two. If you find something that's newly listed that you think is going to work for you, Obviously, walk in with your pre-qualification letter. Be prepared. I'm going to give you an example. I've got a friend of mine who refers business back and forth with us, and he was telling me about a house that just came on the market just up the road here. And this house was coming on the market on a Saturday. They got to the bottom of the driveway. They pre-drafted an offer. They uh, seen all the coming soon marketing. They felt like this could be the one. Uh, they stood at the bottom of the driveway and just kept hitting refresh until it went live, and then went ahead and booked an appointment, went up the driveway, and showed the home. They prepared the listing agent that this was going to happen. Within 35 minutes of walking through the home, they wrote the offer, turned in the offer, and got it under contract and paid over asking price before they knew if there was going to be competition because that's the market we're in right now. So if you're a buyer and you find something you like, don't hesitate. If it's something you really like, don't hesitate. Get it under contract. Put it under option right through our due diligence period. Go ahead and do that now. You just don't have the luxury of waiting any longer, especially at certain price points. What are those price points? Well, let me, let me give you one more statistic. So I always give you the rolling 12-month window of close, right? Rolling 12 months, we're supposed to be somewhere in the 37 to 39,000 range, somewhere in that range, 36, 38, 39,000. Uh, last year on this day, we had had a rolling number of just over 40,000 closed. Right now, we have 42,500, and that's with nine weeks of corona built into that number, guys. Uh, people are buying houses still. Please, please know that. But please take caution when you're out doing what it is you're doing to buy and sell houses. So uh, let's talk a little bit about what's under $250,000 and below. This is the part of the market that we're all sensitive to because it's just not a lot there because land prices are so high that builders can't build uh, affordable housing, right? So the numbers I'm going to give you also include trailers, townhomes, um, you know, every piece of, of, of um, uh, livable real estate under $250,000. Um, we are down 20% where we were last year in terms of what's active on the market. We're down, we're up 33% though on what's pending. So, so last year on this day, we had a certain amount of inventory under $250,000. This year we have 20% less, right? Which is right in line with the market. The market's down 20% in terms of active listings. However, we're up 33% on what's under contract, meaning what's under 250 isn't lasting but a day. Uh, what's closed uh, is up 6% as you know. Well, let's look at this. Let's look specifically at uh, certain towns. Let's look at Raleigh. Of all of the houses for sale in the entire city of Raleigh, 142 of those are under $250,000. Wake Forest has 15. Cary has 15. Fuquay has 20. And Holly Springs has five. Guys, if you are looking for something that's affordable, livable, um, I mean, listen to this. You can't even go as far away as Youngsville now and find under $250,000 homes because Youngsville is at five. Prices have increased you know, considerably over the last five years. Um, the price of land has increased considerably more than that, meaning that builders can't build affordable houses uh, very effectively. I am proud and excited to tell you that I'm working with a builder and we've got 40 townhomes coming out of the ground and we're going to be close to the $250,000 range. Uh, and those should be coming out of the ground this fall. And those are going to be in Wake Forest, and we'll have 40 of those. I'm also excited today I'm working with a different builder to bring you 12 homes pretty quickly, actually. And I think those will be late summer, early fall. Uh, 12 homes uh, under $250,000 in downtown Wake Forest. And really excited about those as well. So stay tuned. We've got some, some relief coming for those of you looking for your first home, for those of you looking for your, your, your in-laws or your, your parents or whomever, uh, looking to get uh, into the town of Wake Forest, but looking to do it affordable, affordably, uh, where I think we're going to have some, some things for you to choose from. Anyhow, that's what I have for you this week. Guys, we are still looking to hire onto our team. If we're interviewing a kid today at, at 1030 that we're really excited about. If there is somebody you know that you think might be a great fit for our team, let us know. The last thing I'm going to leave you with is this. 
we're feeding the firemen again today, right? We feed the firemen every Friday. This this week we're feeding the firemen right down the road from my own house, fire, fire station number four here in Wake Forest. Um, big shout out this week. Johnny's Pizza has stepped up to the plate to help us today and has given us a significant discount to help us feed the firemen. Uh, to Johnny Pavlik and to, to his entire team, thank you so much. We could not be more grateful for you stepping up to help us. You, you don't, it's not something you have to do. So we partner with a local pizza house every single week. Last week it was Slices and Ices and they did the same thing. They were so gracious and so giving to help us, all right? So my point here is if you get a chance and you're looking for a slice of pizza, hit one of these pizza houses up. Again, this week it's Johnny's Pizza and Johnny Pavlik has been so good to our community. So I raise my cup to you, Johnny. To everybody else, I'll see you in a week.